Hi folks, Dr. B. So today I'd like to continue our discussion of the muscles of the lower extremities. Last time we talked about the adductor muscles of the thighs, the abductors and other muscles that move the thigh. And now we're gonna move a little further down the leg and we're gonna look at muscles that specifically cross the knee joint or sometimes even the ankle joint in order to move the leg and later the foot. So let's start with some of our really important muscles that move the leg. And we can loosely divide these into the muscles that cross across the front of the knee and muscles that cross the back of the knee. And that's going to give us a big head start on what sort of motion they do. So remember that if a muscle crosses the back of the knee, whoops, that's not gonna work. If a muscle crosses the back of the knee, so any muscle that crosses back here, when it shortens, it's going to pull that leg up this way, is going to flex the leg. And if it crosses all the way to the pelvis, it will flex the leg and be able to help extend the thigh, because remember, those joints bend in different directions. This joint likes to bend forward when you lift your leg. This joint at the knee likes to bend backwards when you lift your foot. So if it crosses the knee joint, we'll be able to flex the leg. If it also crosses this hip joint, we'll be able to extend the thigh. Then if we look on the other side of the body, if we have muscles on the front of the body, if they cross the front of the knee, they will be able to extend the leg. And if they also cross that hip joint, they will be able to extend the leg and flex the thigh. And in fact, flexing the thigh and extending the leg is that forward step flexing the leg and extending the thigh is landing that step and sliding your foot backwards to push you forward. So this, um, these muscles are really nicely laid out for a walk cycle. So let's look at the muscles across the front of that knee and the muscles across the back of the knee. And we can actually give these groups names. The ones on the front are your quadriceps. Quad means four, and that's gonna be a collection of four muscles. The ones on the back are your hamstrings. And that will be a collection of three muscles. So let's go ahead and dig in to those quadriceps and hamstrings. I guess not physically dig in, but let's look at them more closely. So here's an image that shows you all three of your hamstrings together. They're crossing the back of this joint. And we're going to have the biceps femoris, the semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus. One interesting thing about the name hamstrings is you may occasionally have heard this used as a verb. To hamstring plans means to basically to cripple them or to cause them to be unable to function. And this comes from a very old style of attacking your enemies. So during a fight, if you came up behind another soldier and you sliced across the back of their thighs and cut their hamstrings, if you hamstrung them, those cut muscles would make them lose the ability to continue standing up um, because we're gonna need these hamstrings in order to properly extend the thigh and stand us up straight. You can see that these muscles all cross that hip joint which means they're going to help with extending the thigh because they cross the hip joint in the back. And they also cross the knee joint, which means they're gonna help with flexing the knee. But extending the thigh is the reason that it's so important to have them in order to stand up straight. If you cut those, someone's gonna be hamstrung and collapse to the ground. You could also hamstring your enemy's horses if you wanted to be uh, a jerk. So all, I think hamstringing anyone probably constitutes being a jerk. All right, so let's go ahead and look at these one, two, three and uh, take a closer look. One thing I will point out right away 
is that all of these are up here running from the pubis and two of them are coming down to the tibia, but one of them is going to come over to this fibula. So here we're looking at a back view of the thigh. This is the back right thigh. Here's our glutes up here. We already talked about those. And we're going to look at the hamstrings. And in green is part of the biceps femoris. Biceps, we talked about the biceps brachii, and we said that biceps meant two-headed because the muscle had two branching heads. Same thing here. The biceps femoris is going to have, not the bicep, yeah, the biceps femoris is going to be on the femur rather than the brachium, and it's going to have two heads. So here they've only colored the long head in green, but this little pink sliver back here is the other part of the biceps femoris. So we have this all together. Let's go ahead and peel some of these other muscles out of the way. Here you can see they're all coming down from this pubic bone, um, and they're all, sorry, I'm calling that the pubis. The pubis is in the front. That's going to be that ischial tuberosity, which is that sit bone or the <laughs> ischial bump. And in fact, let's go ahead, since I've misnamed it a couple times, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the structure of that um, pubic bone in just a moment. I call it a pubic bone again, the structure of the coxal bone in just a moment and that ischial tuberosity. But we're going to come from that ischial tuberosity down to the fibula. So here they are, the biceps femoris short head and biceps femoris long head. And that's with all the muscles taken away, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it on here because we're looking at both heads together for our purposes. The biceps femoris originates on the ischial tuberosity and it also connects along the linea aspera of the upper femur. So this line kind of running along the back of the femur is also going to have some origins of this bicep femoris, um, specifically this smaller one. Actually, let me see. Do I have that pulled up still? Nope. All right. So that smaller head actually originates um, behind it specifically on this femur. So there's one originating up here, one head. The second head is originating on the femur. But both of them are going to come together and come down to insert into the head of the fibula right down here. So that head of the fibula. that's not directly articulating with the femur, but rather articulating with the tibia. So let's take a closer look real fast at that coxal bone to get ourselves oriented. So here is our pelvic girdle with our two coxal bones and our sacrum in the back. And if you remember, this big wing is the iliac or the ilium with the iliac crest. In the front, we have the pubis forming this pubic symphysis. And down here, we have kind of in the back, we have the ischium. And the big landmark of the ischium is this big bump right here and this big bump right here, which you can see in the back. And these bumps are formed by the muscle attachments for our legs. In particular, you notice those hamstrings are pulling real hard on those ischial tuberosity. The other thing that's important about those bumps is if you were to take a seat, that's what's gonna be supporting your weight. So those bumps are big because they're supporting your weight when you sit down. These are your sit bones, ischial tuberosity, and also because your hamstrings and your, a lot of your other leg muscles are anchoring directly into there. Let me grab my skeleton for a minute. So you can see, here's my ischial tuberosity here and here, and you can see that if he goes to take a seat, those are gonna be where a lot of his weight is. So people that don't have a lot of padding on there, but may notice that that's the part that's really digging in and they want a nice cushion on their chair. Cause that'll start being ouchy after that. Oh, he's just fallen over. All right. So with that in place, let's build on our biceps femoris and talk about what it's gonna be able to do. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna wanna connect from this ischial tuberosity all the way back to this um, top of the fibula. And so if I put that muscle here and here, 
and look at it, you can see that if that contracts, we are going to flex the leg and we're going to extend the thigh. So extend the thigh, flex the leg. So it gives us this combination of when our leg, so let's imagine our legs up like this kicked out, we're going to bring it back and then keep on bringing it back. All right, so <laughs> flex the leg, extend the thigh. Let's look at the next one of the three hamstrings. So we just covered the biceps femoris and if we work our way inwards medially, we will then hit our semitendinosus and then the next one over will be that semimembranosus. So let's look at the semitendinosus first. That name means half tendon or kind of tendon-like and that's related to how much tendon is found um, in this muscle. So actually let's go ahead and pull some of this stuff away. So strip that off, strip that off. Here's just our semitendinosus and our biceps femoris on the other side. Strip that off and you can see that it looks like it's about half tendon. So here's our muscle up here and all of this down here is the tendon coming around uh, the side of the knee to uh, and sort of the back of the knee to pull on that tibia. So we're going to be pulling on that hip joint and pulling on that tibia. And that means across the knee joint, that means we're going to be able to extend the thigh and flex the leg just like last time. So this one, again, originates on that ischial tuberosity. We don't have any connections over here on this femur. Um, that's just the biceps femoris. We're gonna come all the way down across that knee joint and we're going to insert into the medial condyle, so this outer articular surface of the tibia, and actually the lateral condyle of the femur. So we do get a little bit of right here, a little bit of connection here. So these two condyles, or the lateral condyle, <laughs> it's kind of over here. All right, so we come all the way around here and kind of wrap across the back of that knee. That's gonna give us our flexed leg and extended thigh. And I'm gonna wait to build that one on. I'll go ahead and do it with the semi, uh, oh, no wonder I'm getting confused. <laughs> the, I'm reading the semimembranosus, the semitendinosus just as the medial condyle or specifically this upper tibial shaft right here. So yeah, it's not over here. I was clearly not very awake today. So ischial tuberosity down to this on the medial side and then this tibial shaft. So here we go. Having tendon here really does help protect it as it crosses this joint so it doesn't take a lot of damage. Um, tendons are a little sturdier and more protective. So they're very good for crossing joints and for strong anchor points. So let's go ahead and put that semimembranosus in place since I was getting the two confused here. So working our way inwards, we just did this one. We did the semitendinosus and then now the, la the next one and the last of the hamstrings, semimembranosus. Semimembranosus means half membrane. The reason the semimembranosus gets its name is this tendon of origin looks kind of flat and membrane-like, like a sheet of tendon rather than a cord. So if we start stripping some of these other muscles away, there we go, our semimembranosus. It's like the semitendinosus, it's lying right parallel to this biceps femoris, but it is the deepest, the tendinosus semitendinosus is going to stack on top and be the most superficial. So this is very deep muscle. And this one, semimembranosus, is going to come down from this ischial tuberosity onto this medial condyle of the tibia. So together, all three are going to cross this hip joint, 
across this knee joint, all of them are going to flex the leg and extend the thigh. The fact that they extend the thigh and help you stand up straight or help you stand up at all is why hamstringing someone will prevent them from being able to stand up. They won't be able to extend their thigh um, to even get up to their knees. So if we look at this on our diagrams from open stacks, this over here on the right is the posterior thigh. They've cut away the uh, gluteal muscles, but here down here you can see the hamstrings and the one that's most lateral is the biceps femoris. Then we have the um, medial one, the semitendinosus and most superficial. And then the most lateral one here, sorry, not the medial one, the intermediate one is the semitendinosus. It's also the most superficial. And then the most lateral one is going to be the semimembranosus. You'll notice there's one more muscle running along the inside of the thigh. We talked about that muscle already. The muscle that's running the inside of the thigh is the gracilis. It means delicate, graceful, thin muscle. So that's our inside of the thigh, long, thin muscle here, the gracilis. That one's going to be able to adduct because it's on the inside rather than um, extend or flex because it's not across the front or back of a joint. So having just covered the hamstrings, let's now talk about the quadriceps. And remember quad means four because this, this, is, a, this is a set of four muscles that run across the front of that hip joint, some of them across the hip joint, and all of them across the front of the knee. And that means they're going to be able to extend the leg and the one that crosses the hip joint will be able to also flex the thigh. So these muscles are layered in kind of deep um, uh, kind of in a little bundle. So actually, let me go ahead and do, let's imagine we have a muscle. I'm going to actually fill these with here we go. All right, so here's the deepest muscle running straight up the middle of the thigh. That's going to be the vastus intermedialis or intermedius, and that means it's in the middle or intermediate zone of the femur. Then on top of that, we're going to have a muscle layered, um, well, we'll go ahead and leave that <laughs> circled in blue. We're going to have a muscle layered a little bit to the inside. That's going to be the vastus medialis because it's more medial. And we're going to have a muscle layered a little bit to the outside, and that will be the vastus lateralis because it's on the lateral side. And then in the very front, we're going to have right back down the middle again, we're going to have the muscle we call the rectus femoris. And rectus means straight because it's running straight up and down the femur. So in the back, behind the rectus femoris, behind the other two, right down the middle, vastus intermedialis. Then in the middle, we have the vastus medialis, vastus lateralis. And then in the front, right down the middle again, the rectus femoris. So that's our set of four muscles. All of these muscles are going to have a common tendon. So here's a, oops, I should actually do this with lines, brushes. So here's our bundle of four muscles, let's imagine. And they're all going to fuse together into a common tendon that we call the quadriceps tendon. And that tendon is going to come down and grab this kneecap, the patella. So that's our set of four muscles the quadriceps, oops, I don't know why I put a G there, the quadriceps, here's our quadricep tendon, here's our patella inside that tendon, and then connecting bone to bone, we're going to have a ligament, and so we're going to have the patellar ligament come down from the patella and connect on right here to that tuberosity. So if we look at 
the femur and the tibia and they nestle together, you'll notice that right here is a big bump, the tibial tuberosity, and that is the place where that um, patellar ligament and the quadriceps tendon and the quadriceps are pulling on this tibia. So another way to model this, here's a model of the knee joint. So we would have the quads up here. Here's the quadriceps tendon. Here's that patella or kneecap right in there. And then here's the patellar ligament connecting to the tibial tuberosity. So when the quadriceps pull, so here's it's when it's bent, when they pull and shorten this muscle, when this muscle gets shorter, they're going to, actually we should even imagine it like this. When they pull and shorten this muscle, they're going to extend the leg. All right, so let's take a peek at these one by one. And we'll start all the way deepest into the muscles, all the way down against the bone. So let's go ahead and strip away a bunch of our external muscles. Keep stripping away, keep stripping away. There we go. So right up against the bone, running right down the intermediate or the middle of the bone is the vastus intermedius, literally vastus, meaning vast or big, the big muscle intermediate along the um, femur. So this muscle, the vastus intermedius, is connected from the proximal shaft of the femur, so kind of up here, high, and it's going to come down to this quadriceps tendon, to the patella, and all of them, because they all share this common tendon and ligament, all of them are going to pull specifically on this tibial tuberosity. So this is only crossing the knee joint, and it's crossing in the front, so it's going to extend the leg and nothing else. If we look on either side of it, we will get um, on the inside, the vastus medialis, on the outside, the vastus lateralis. So let's go ahead and look at the vastus medialis. Let's pull some muscles away. So the vastus intermedius is hiding kind of back behind them. But here in green, we have the vastus medialis. And on red on the right, we have the vastus lateralis. Let's pull all those away. And here's our vastus medialis running medial along the femur. So again, this one originates um, from this linea aspera of the upper femur and the intertrochanteric line. That means between these two trochanters, but it's gonna come down here and again, connect to that tibial tuberosity. Vastus lateralis, lift all this stuff away. Here it is on the lateral side of the leg. And sure enough, running along that lateral tibia, sorry, did I call it tibia? <laughs> lateral femur. This one starts on the greater trochanter of the femur, that big bump here, greater trochanter, and also that intertrochanteric line between the two trochanters and that linea aspera. And it's gonna come all the way down and again to that tibial tuberosity. So those are the three vastus muscles of the quadriceps. In the very front, we have the rectus femoris, and this one's gonna have something a little special about it. So these three, the first three, the vastus, only cross that knee joint. They all cross in the front, so they all just do extension of the leg, kicking your foot out. <laughs> Let's do the rectus femoris. So in the very front of the quadriceps running along the front, let's lift some of the stuff away. We have that crossing. Remember that's the sartorius crossing along the front. Here's our gracilis on our inner thigh. So let's lift those out of the way. Here we have our vast, not vastus. <laughs> Here we have our rectus femoris in green with the other three vastus muscles behind it. Go ahead and pull everything out of the way so we can see it. Here's our rectus femoris. And what's unique about this one is that it doesn't just connect or it doesn't just cross this knee joint. 
it's connected up here onto the pelvic bone, which means it also crosses the hip joint. So we know that means it's going to be able to extend the leg, sorry, extend the leg and flex the thigh. So our rectus femoris, rectus means straight, like standing erect. And femoris means it's on the femur or the thigh. So this is the straight muscle of the thigh. It's running straight up the middle, just like the intermedius. So this straight or erect muscle of the thigh is going to originate on the anterior inferior iliac spine. So if we remember to find our iliac spines, we wanna start with that iliac crest. Either end of the crest are our superior spines. So in the front of the crest is our anterior superior spine. And then following right down, here's our anterior inferior iliac spine. And sure enough, here it is attaching to the sky. It's also uh, going to be a little bit in the uh, superior margin of the acetabulum. So right in that socket, you can kind of see right up along that front edge of the socket. And then it's going to come all the way down and pull on that tibial tuberosity using that same tendon. So let me go ahead and build this one on because it's a little different than the other guys. All right, so remember across the, from the femur shaft, down through this patella and the ligament onto this tibial tuberosity, we're going to have the deepest muscle, the vastus intermedialis. And I'm gonna go ahead and include where it would be crossing that knee, even though that's really some ligament and tendon at that point. I'm just gonna smoosh it onto the bone here. Oh, it still doesn't wanna stick. All right, on either side, down the middle, a little bit to one side, here's our vastus medialis, a little bit more lateral. Here's our vastus lateralis. And then right down the front, starting from this spine here, all the way down to the same spot as the rest of them, that's our rectus. Oh, it really doesn't want to stay attached. That is our rectus femoris. So the three vastus can just extend that leg. The rectus femoris can extend the leg and pull here to flex the thigh. That's our quadriceps. A quad, a set of four, whoops, <laughs> a set of four uh, muscles along the front of your thigh. Beautiful quadriceps muscle. All right. So if we look here at this view of the front of the thigh, we have here our rectus femoris, here our vastus medialis, here our vastus lateralis, and under all of them will be the vastus intermedius. So now that we've talked about these muscles that move the leg and occasionally also the thigh, let's move our way down and look at muscles that are mostly located down here on the leg and are going to cross this ankle joint in order to move the foot. So if we consider if a muscle runs across the front of this ankle, oops, Brush. If a muscle runs across the front of this ankle, we'll be able to lift the toes and dorsiflex because the dorsal side of the foot is this back of the foot here that's facing upwards. If a muscle runs across the back of the foot or especially attaches down onto this heel, we're going to be able to point the toes or plantar flex the foot. because the plantar side of the foot is that flat bottom of the foot. If a muscle pulls on the inside of the ankle and pulls the foot inwards, that's going to be inverting the foot. 
Invert means to turn inward. So if you lift the flat of your foot in towards the inside of your body, if a muscle pulls on this side of the ankle, that's going to turn your foot outwards. That's going to be everting your foot. By the way, inverting and everting your foot is a good way to twist your ankle, stepping off the side of your foot. So that gets us loosely um, the types of motions we're likely to have in the ankle. So let's go ahead and look at some of the key muscles. We're not gonna look at all the muscles in the leg because just like when we talked about our forearm compartment, um, anterior compartment, posterior compartment, and our forearm, there's a bunch of muscles in there to get all these cool hand movements. You also have a bunch of muscles down here that connect into various toes and parts of your feet. So we're gonna simplify it a little and just look at um, a few important ones. So let's start on the back of the leg, essentially your calves. And let's look at some of the important muscles of your calf. And the two main muscles we're gonna talk about that are on the back of the leg are going to be the gastrocnemius, which is the most superficial, and the soleus muscle, which is a little deeper and underneath the gastrocnemius. So to visualize these, let's first of all think about their names. Gastro comes from the same word as stomach, gastritis. And it's called the gastrocnemius because it's considered the stomach muscle of your calf, not because it does any digesting, but because that's kind of the big fat belly part of your leg. So the gastrocnemius is forming a lot of that belly of your calf, right in the back of the calf. And actually, let's look at a side view real fast. Well, before we do a side view, here's a cutaway where you can see that gastrocnemius forming that big fat calf and then deeper to it, the soleus um, underneath. And here's a side view, the gastrocnemius in the back, very superficial, forming the belly of the calf. And here underneath, the soleus. The soleus gets its name from the word for sole, like the sole of a shoe. It means big, flat, kind of a plane. And sure enough, the soleus muscle is a thinner, flatter muscle, like the sole of a shoe, that is deep to the gastrocnemius. So if we cut away the gastrocnemius, we get to the soleus. So now that we have kind of a visual for where these guys are located related to each other, let's look through each muscle. And as always, we'll start with the deepest muscle, the soleus, and then move our way up to the gastrocnemius. So here is a, it's kind of hard to see, this is a view of the back of the leg, the calf. Here's the heel of the foot. Here's the bottom of the foot. And the gastrocnemius is, of course, the big muscle running across most of the back of your leg. So let's lift that away to get to the soleus. So here's the soleus underneath. Got some other fun stuff going there, too. But here's our soleus. And we'll go ahead and pull all those other muscles out from around it. Here we go. It's a thin, flat muscle running um, very deep within your leg. So this muscle, where does it connect? Well, you'll notice it's not crossing the knee joint, so it's not gonna be able to move the leg at all, but it is crossing the ankle joint, so it will be able to move the foot. And because it crosses the back of that ankle joint and pulls on that heel bone, it's going to pull that heel up, which means it's going to point the toe down, which means it's going to do plantar flexion of the foot. So let's look at its attachment points. The soleus originates on the superior tibia, so high on the tibia, also a little bit on the fibula, and it also connects to the interosseous membrane, which means the membrane that um, runs between those two bones and helps hold them tightly together. So it's connected right up here at that kind of merging between the tibia and the fibula, and then it's gonna run down the back of the leg and connect to that calcineus. Specifically, it's going to attach to the posterior part of the calcineus. The calcineus, if you don't remember, is the heel bone of the tarsals. So if we look here, here's the tibia. I'm not gonna try to juggle the fibula right now, but here's the foot. The tibia articulates with the talus, the tarsal right here where it sits on, and that's our articulation that lets us dorsiflex the foot plantar flex the foot, and a little bit of aversion and inversion. So we got a little bit of wiggle side to side, not a whole lot. 
and the calcineus is this big sticking out bone that forms your heel. So we're going to be connecting from high on this tibia down to this heel. Let's go ahead and build that on. So here's the back of my skeleton. Here's his little foot. And we're gonna run from right here where the tibia and the fibula connect. So we're gonna attach from right there. I don't really have to squeeze to get it to stick on to this heel. So if I turn sideways, if I pull on that heel, I'm going to plant or flex the foot. So if I pull that heel up, my toe goes down. That is plantar flexion of the foot. So this is going to be good for plantar flexing the foot. Let's put the next muscle on. Let's move on to the gastrocnemius. So here again is the back of the leg. Here's our gastrocnemius, the big belly of the calf. And if we go ahead and pull all the muscles out from under and over it, so we can see it by itself, here's our gastrocnemius. And you'll notice that unlike the soleus, this one is connecting up here on the femur. So it is crossing the knee joint and the ankle joint. So let's look at where this one connects. It originates on the medial and lateral condyles of the femur, so those two bumps where they articulate with the tibia, so up here on the femur, and then comes all the way along, doesn't attach to the tibia, it's going to come all the way down and insert, again, just like the soleus, into that posterior calcineus. So it crosses the ankle joint in the same location, that's going to allow plantar flexion, but it also crosses that knee joint since it's crossing the knee joint in the back, that's also going to allow flexing of the leg. So let's build that one on. So here, instead of like the soleus just running from here to here, we're going to start up on the femur on these two condyles at the back of the leg. This is about to fall apart, but we're going to start up on that femur and go all the way to the heel. So if you look at it from the side, if I tighten this muscle, the leg is going to flex and the toe is going to point. That's part of my stride kicking. That's going to be the gastrocnemius. It's that big motion of taking a step like that. So plantar flexion of the foot, flexion of the leg. Now that we've looked at two important muscles on the back of the leg, let's look at some muscles on the front of the leg. And remember, because they're on the front of the leg, they are going to be able to do the opposite set of movements. So instead of being on the back of the leg where they can do plantar flexion of the foot and potentially flexion of the leg and potentially if we went all the way up to the hip extension of the hip, we're on the front of the leg, we're going to be able to do dorsiflexion of the foot, extension of the knee or extension of the leg, I should say. And I guess if we were all the way back up to the thigh, we would be able to do flexion of the thigh, but we're going to stick down here. So let's look at some of these muscles running across the front of the leg. So we're going to look at two muscles running along the front of the leg. We're going to look at a muscle called the uh, tibialis anterior. And we're going to look at a more, uh, a deeper muscle rather than a superficial muscle, a deeper muscle, muscle called the extensor digitorum longus. So I normally start deep, so let's go ahead and start deep. Um, we're going to strip away some of these superficial muscles and get all the way into that extensor digitorum longus. And you'll notice this muscle starts way up here high on the tibia, but not crossing the knee. So we won't be able to do any leg movement here. And then it crosses the ankle and runs down along the toes. So we'll not only be able to do some ankle movement, we'll be able to do some toe movement as well. And in fact, its name tells you exactly what it does. Extensor, it's an extensor muscle, and it extends the digitorum, the digits, in this case, the toes. And this is the extensor digitorum longus because it's the long version of these muscles. What's the short version of this? Well, the short version is essentially the comparable muscle, but on the arm, extending the wrist and the fingers. So the extensor digitorum is a little shorter, it's on your arms, 
the extensor digitorum longus is down on your leg and it's working on your foot and toes instead of your wrist and fingers. So this muscle, where does it originate? Where does it insert? It originates on the lateral condyle of the tibia, so over on the outside edge of the tibia, and the proximal portion of the fibula, as well as that interosseous membrane. So essentially it's on the, um, right up here. Sorry, <laughs> essentially it's on the right up here. That was very coherent. All right, so we're gonna start up here towards the top of the shaft and we're gonna come all the way down. We're gonna cross this ankle joint and we're gonna use tendons to come all the way along and connect to the middle and distal phalanges of all of our toes, except for our big toe. So this muscle will be able to pull across the front of that ankle and pull across the front of those toe joints. And if we were to look at our little skeleton, <laughs> let's go ahead and build that on real fast. So here we want to come from right up here, the top of the tibia and the top of the fibula, and we want to come down and use tendons to connect into each of these second, third, fourth, and fifth toes. So let's go ahead and do that. I went ahead and built some tendons on here. I don't normally bother with that. Don't want to cross that knee joint, but we're going to start right up here, and we're going to come down onto these toes, all of the toes except for the big toe. And if we look at this from the side <laughs> and it doesn't want to stay up, we are going to be able to lift those, lift the foot and toes. That's going to dorsiflex the foot. And because those toes, if they were curled, we'd also be able to extend the toes. So dorsiflexion of the foot, extension of the toes or the digits. Let's look at our second muscle that we're going to look at on the front of the leg. So here we have our tibialis anterior muscle. And this one tells you about where it's located. Anterior, it's in the front. Tibialis, it's running along our tibia. So let's go ahead and strip away some of this. This muscle is very superficial. We can see it without lifting any other muscles away. But let's go ahead and strip all those out from underneath. Um, the extensor digitorum uh, longus is behind it and more towards that uh, lateral side of the leg. This one's gonna cross over to that big toe, to the medial side of the leg. So let's go ahead and strip everything away. And here you can see the tibialis anterior starts in a really similar spot to the extensor digitorum longus. It literally starts in that lateral condyle of the upper tibial shaft and that interosseous membrane between the bones. So same, general origin, but rather than come down straight, it's actually going to cross the tibia and come down to this first digit. Specifically, it's going to insert into the interior surface of the medial cuneiform, that's a tarsal bone, and the first metatarsal bone, so the first uh, bone of the uh, kind of inside edge of your foot. So once again, we're not crossing the knee. We're not going to be able to do any movement of the leg, but we are crossing the ankle, and that means we're going to be able to move the ankle. So let's go ahead and get that in place. So here we wanna come from the top of the tibia, kind of near the uh, fibula, and we wanna come down across the front of the tibia towards this first metatarsal of the inner edge of the foot. So let's go ahead and get that in place. I'm gonna go ahead and loop this back over to help hold it in place. And we're gonna come down across the foot. So you can see from the side view that, yep, sure enough, we're going to be able to use this to pull up on those toes and dorsiflex the foot. But the other thing that we can do is because we're coming across the foot, <laughs> because we're coming across the foot, we can pull on the inside of the edge of the foot and pull it towards the lateral side of the foot and that, where you lift the foot like that, that is, um, that is going to be the um, inversion of the foot because we turn it inwards, inversion. If we turned it outwards, that would be eversion. But this is going to dorsiflex the foot and invert the foot. 
So just to reorient ourselves, here is a view of the figures from your textbook, and you can see that we have cut away the gastric nemius, the belly of the calf, to reveal underneath it the soleus, which is a little deeper. That's on the back of the leg. On the front of the leg, we have the tibialis anterior, very superficial, crossing along the front towards the inside of the foot so that it can also invert that foot. And then immediately behind it, the flexor digitorum longus, which runs down fairly straight and onto each of the toes using uh, tendons. So those are the four muscles I want you to know um, for the leg. Let's actually now look underneath. Let's get down under there and look at a muscle on the bottom of the foot to put one more piece in place. So if we look at the bottom of the foot, and here's different depths of the bottom of the foot, but let's look at a fairly superficial one right here. Let me actually get a brush right here along the bottom of the foot is a muscle we're gonna look at. This is the flexor digitorum brevis. This one is brief or short because it's on your foot and it's gonna be a lot shorter than a lot of other muscles. Let me give you another view of it. So here's our flexor digitorum brevis. This is another one like the extensor digitorum longus that tells you right where it is. It flexes the digits, in this case the toes, and it's brief or short. It's just running around along the bottom of the foot. It originates on that calcineal heel bone, the calcineal tuberosity, the back of that heel, and it runs down using tendons all the way along each of your four toes, except for the big toe. And so when it contracts, it will flex those toes or curl your toes. So that's an example of one that's up inside the foot. And that is it. That is all I wanted to talk to you about in terms of the muscles of the lower extremities. Obviously there are other muscles um, that you could learn, but hopefully now you have an idea of how to go about thinking about how these muscles attach, where they are in the body, and how that relates to the movements that they create. So. Good luck, and next time we will talk about the joints of the lower extremities and then the nerves.